Welcome to Voices of Women. I'm your host, Chris Stainis, and I'm also the founder of Women of Wisdom Foundation, which we, I began in 1993. And we have lots of experiential workshops. And today I'm interviewing one of our workshop presenters, Lisa Espinoza. And so you can read all about our website, womanofwisdom.org. So Lisa Espinoza is a spiritual career coach and the award-winning author of the book, Answering Your Inner Calling. Her forthcoming book is Birthing the Priestess Within, A Priestess Origin Story and Manual for Bringing Healing to the World. Lisa is the creator and host of the podcast Soul Studio for Your Career. She integrates her training in the internal family systems model of psychotherapy, Reiki energy healing, and principles of spirituality and mysticism, mysticism in her work. She's the mother of five beautiful children and lives in Chicago. She will be giving the workshop at Woman of Wisdom. It's called Writing and Embodying Your Priestess Origin Story. It'll be Friday morning, March 12th. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, so we're glad to have you at the conference. And um, so let's start off with how you became a spiritual career coach. Yeah, so I was, before this work, I was a Chicago public school teacher for almost 10 years. I taught seventh grade and that was absolutely work that I loved to do. I was very committed to it. And at the same time, there was a lot unfolding in my personal life. I was really delving more deeply into my spiritual life and I had finalized the divorce. There was just a lot going on and I re and had started a yoga practice and a meditation practice. And it was my ninth year teaching seventh grade. And I was, I remember very clearly, I was teaching a reading class to my seventh graders and I had a little bit of a out of body experience where it's like I was teaching, but I was also watching myself teach and heard very clearly your time here is done. Right. And that was very, it was both like so surprising because I, there was a lot of doors opening for me in education. I wasn't near retirement age or anything like that. I, you know, I had just won a very prestigious teaching award in Chicago, but it also made sense because I had kept asking myself, why am I not happier? You know, there's all these doors opening. I'm at the height of my career. So I describe in my book, Answering Your Inner Calling, that it was this like both relief and sheer terror at the same time of like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So that was the beginning of, so that was my last year teaching. I left teaching to really embark in this this other field of spirituality and helping people connect with their soul. Now, at that time, I didn't think I'm going to be a spiritual career coach. You know, it was just like I knew it would involve Reiki and it would involve, like you shared in my bio, the internal family systems model of psychotherapy. But it was a little bit of, me of a meandering road until I realized that my clients, mostly women, that really I really connected with and were coming to me a lot were women who were wanting to evolve their career, who were feeling either like they were in a career that they, they still enjoyed, but they were kind of spinning their wheels and feeling like, I know there's more, but I'm feeling stuck. Or some women who, like me, were kind of like, I'm being called to something totally different. So that was how that was birthed, that I was really like, oh, this is what I'm helping. I love talking about that with women. I love that journey. And of course, I experienced it leaving my established career to now be doing this for 10 years. So that's really how it began. That was a little bit of how it began. Well, what's your favorite part of that work? I think my favorite part is that I'm really helping women to develop this strong relationship with their soul and be led from within. I mean, yes, I'm a spiritual career coach. I'm creating that space for them. I Obviously, I offer guidance and teachings but it's not me who's doing the work, right? It's, it's really creating that sacred space so that they can delve even more deeply into what that inner wisdom is and what their unique soul's medicine is, right? Like we all have a unique medicine and that I love that. I love that just facilitating that journey for women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's that it's an inner journey to finding, you know, what is, what is your calling? What are you here for? And uh, we all do that at, at some part in our lives, sometimes a little bit later in life. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to give up on that. You can be 50, 60. Think of some of the women that have done things, start, started things at 70, you know, becoming an artist or, or whatever. Um, oh my that... gosh. Absolutely. In fact, 
I mean, I have three clients who are 70. Most of my clients are older women who've had already an established career. And, you know, they're like, I'm not done. You know, I have, I have so much to share and, and a lot of, and so much wisdom, right? So much wisdom gained through so much initiation, so many initiations in their lives. So yes. Yes, that's great. So you, you have a book coming up, mm-hmm. Birthing the Priestess Within. Yes. Um, is that a, a continuation of your first book or um, tell us what it's about? Yeah, that's such a great question because I, I when I first, so my book had been out for about three years, my first book, when I kind of got the, the spiritual download of like, oh, there's you're pregnant with a second book, right? Like this whole, and I heard the title right away, the main title, Birthing the Priestess Within. And I didn't at the time think, oh, this is part two of answering your inner calling. You know, it felt like it was a kind of a different, a whole different creation. But now that I've been working on it and writing and, and presenting on it and, and all these things, I realized that it is like, Answering your inner calling was that question, okay, what is your soul's medicine? What are you here for? Birthing the priestess within is really talking about a specific call to the priestess path. And what I, what I refer, what I describe as the, the priestess path as being a channel of unconditional love for yourself and for the world. I didn't intend to write a book about priestessing. Like it wasn't like I thought, oh yeah, one day I'm going to write about being a priestess, but that's the word that landed in my heart and I had to really follow that. So, so yeah, in a lot of ways, it's, it goes deeper into this calling now of the priestess. Well, what does that mean to you, the, the priestess? Yeah. So for me, you know, to get to the real, just kind of the, the essence of that is that we're answering the call to be channels of fully loving ourselves and loving others. That doesn't mean that we're perfect. Well, obviously we're humans. We have an ego and we're going to judge ourselves and we judge others. That's what we do. But that we're take, we're committed to have this ongoing practice every day to go back within and channel that unconditional love that comes from source that we can all do that. And that's the, the, what I see it now. I work a lot with wellness professionals. So a lot of my conversation with this is I'm talking to a lot of women who do wellness work, right? So whether they're therapists or they're body workers or they're social workers or teachers, which I would consider being wellness professionals. So there's that aspect of it, but at its essence is really, I'm here to be a channel of unconditional love. Like how do I, uh, what do I need to heal within myself to be able to do that? Yeah, and it's tied into to what is your calling? Um, yes. What What is your purpose? How are you... Um, how can you bring that about through uh, expressing unconditional love, uh, unconditionally loving yourself to be able to do that work, that that's your calling and all that. So it's all, it's all that inner work. And that's, you know, finding it out inside yourself instead of finding out there externally around you, what's my calling. And, you know, that's kind of the young way to do it. Of, of, and it's typical in our Western culture to be looking outside like, what is, what is it? What is it I'm supposed to be doing when it's that inner journey of finding that? Absolutely. Yes. That, and I think that's the, that was one of my worries about calling myself a spiritual career coach. That's why I added the word spiritual, because I think people think career coach and they think resumes, networking, all that external stuff. Now, I absolutely talk about that with my clients when, when the time is right, but it's all an inner journey, it, as you said. And when we love ourselves, oh my gosh, our ability to hold, to create space for others, to bring healing is just so magnified. So it's really is a selfless journey, a very courageous one. (laughs) Uh, And so it's about the priestess origin story. Um, What does that mean? Origin story. And then, and you're, and the workshops about like, you know, finding out. So I imagine you'll be sharing why it's important to write and embody your priestess origin story. So we'll be exploring that in the workshop, but tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So when I started writing my book, you know, there were all these stories that were coming forth and I was really, on the one hand, there was a manual aspect of it, right? I was talking about some practices that I felt were important, but also a lot of personal stories were coming. And I was like, gosh, am I writing two different books? And in one sense, it felt like I was writing a memoir. And then I was felt like I was writing more of a, had a how-to, but more of that kind of genre. 
And it took me a long time to really, as I kept writing, one of the practices that I talk about, the processes that I talk about is the remembering, you know, this whole process of remembering, right? Remembering why we're here, remembering on, on so many levels. And I love um, comic book like stories like I love superhero movies and I've always loved if you watch like Spider-Man or Batman or Wonder Woman they have an origin story they talk about the origin story of the superhero and it's usually well always it involves some sort of initiation right some sort of you know this time where they didn't know who they were where they felt like they were less than probably where there was a lot of challenges and they were really invited from within i mean now they don't use the word soul but that's what i would call it from their soul to to face their inner wounding and finally stand in who they are so i've always loved that and when i was writing this these chapters and then my own stories were coming forth i find one day i was like oh my gosh i'm writing my priestess origin story and then i was like this is what i help women do when before I asked them to write it, when I was just kind of coaching women, I recognized that so much of the process was them going back to remembering some really important experiences in their lives. And not that they hadn't processed because most of the women that I work with and some men as well, you know, they've done a lot of inner work. It's not like they're new to soul work or anything like that, mm -hmm. but there's another level of the healing that is ready to happen. So it was in these revisiting, whether it was their relationship with their mother, whether it was something in a previous job, whether, whether it was some sort of usually experience that was challenging and really awoke, awakened within them their compassion. It was hard, but on the other side, they were more, much more compassionate and wise and loving beings. So that's what the that was the origins of the priestess origin story and then when I was like okay I want to really present this I mean I felt like I had been doing it indirectly but this past year I uh, led a priestess mentoring program it was a nine-month program it was nine women or eight women I think and the core of all, there was a, I was sharing teachings and excerpts from the book but the the, really the glue that was holding it together was inviting them to write their priestess origin story. And now I want to be clear, it's not one, right? It's not like, it's really, and in the workshop, this is what I'll be doing, kind of guiding a part of it, guiding an inner journey to ask your soul, what is the, the one chapter, let's say, of your priestess origin story that you're being guided to explore today, right? That, you're, that your soul is saying, look at this one you know this is where there's a gem there's a diamond there's wisdom to be gained even more fully and so that's the that's a little bit about the priest's origin story yes well um share a little uh, a highlight of your own priest's origin story you know yeah. we learn from our, our our own experiences and we learn from other people's experiences and a lot of what woman wisdom is about is sharing our stories so yes share a little bit here yeah absolutely so it's so interesting, like, you know, as I was leading the priestess mentoring program and, you know, there's so many aspects to my priestess origin story. And I, I didn't want it to be this that I was called to explore because part of me was like, I have explored this for so long, but it was really about my relationship with my mom, my mother, and really that, and becoming a mother as well. You know, so my, my, my parents are Mexican immigrants, you know, they immigrated to Mexico. I was born in Chicago and my mom's mother, you know, so there's kind of like this legacy of motherless mothers on my mom's side. You know, it's just like for various reasons, you know, my, my mother's mom, my grandmother, her mom died very young. So she wasn't raised by her mom. My own mom, even though her mom was alive, she was kind of not given away, but you know, they were very poor in Mexico and they were, she was sent off to another family because they just couldn't afford to raise her. And that was, as you can imagine, very, very painful for her. So she also didn't have her mom. And although I had my mom with me, it was my brother and I, you know, she, and, and again, I've worked, there's many years of, of processing this, but, you know, she, a lot of her wounding came up in her relationship with me. So she wasn't able to be as emotionally connected to me as she was, say, my brother. And that was something that was very painful for me, you know, brought up so much. So it's, I, I feel like I've been, 
part of my connection to the divine mother to, you know, whether it's mother Mary or Kuan Yin, you know, just divine feminine has been my own search to be mothered, you know, to be mothered from within, but to reconnect with that. And my mom was a teenage mom. And then of course, and then I became a teenage mom too, you know, I was, I was the same age as she was. So it's been a long exploration and this year for sure, although I was like, no, I've done all of this work. It was of course, again, you know, an important part of, for me to look at again and, and uncover more, heal more of the wounds and also step into more of that divine creatrix mothering energy so I could embody that more in my life. And, and yes, and, and heal that, like you are doing the healing work that's stopping that, you know, here's this pattern from grandmother, great grandmother, and you doing this work um, kind of stops that trajectory of like, you know, creating the correct mothering, the unconditional loving of a mother and all that. And so doing that work. So that's, um, that's, that's a, a wonderful story. And, and it, it's, you know, it never ends. It's, it's pe going, peeling the onion and going to la layers and layers. So, you know, we all, we think we've done this work and it pops up again. So it's just going to deeper levels of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Part of our journey. Yeah. So, um, you are part of a, a, one of our panels on, on racial equity. We call it heart-centered activism, the power of women to create racial equity. And, um, I would love for you to share what you think women's role is and how we can be allies to stop this systemic racism that's um, very, um, very visual in our culture right now. It's just up front in our faces and we're all kind of wondering, well, what can we do? Yeah. What is our role to do? How can we be an ally? All that. Absolutely. I mean, I think one important thing is the first thing is just willingness to have the conversations, right? And willingness to be uncomfortable because it can be an uncomfortable conversation and, and painful in a lot of ways. And I mean, I remember when I taught seventh grade, I was, and I taught mostly Mexican American students or, or, or some students who had just come from Mexico. And there was a lot of um, conversations about race and conversations about their experiences. and. I remember having conversations with other teachers in the building and how uncomfortable they were having these conversations, right? And it's not that I wasn't, I was definitely, you know, um, I wanted to be respectful. And of course I brought in my own experience. Yes, I was born here, but my parents were Mexican immigrants. My first language was Spanish. I mean, I, my dad was an electrician, my mom a beautician. I was, it was, there's been a lot, a long journey for me working through that, but I feel like the first word is just being willing to have the conversation and, and I don't know if I want to say being okay, that it's going to be uncomfortable, but, but understanding that there might be discomfort and that doesn't mean it's wrong. You're doing it wrong. It doesn't mean that. And I think in the spiritual realm world, I'm all about being positive. I, I, that's so important. I understand that. And I, I, I consider myself an optimistic person really in a lot of ways, but there can be a little bit of this kind of spiritual bypassing that can happen where it's like, well, let's not talk, let's just love and light, love and light, love and light, right? Let's not look at, and it's like, that does a disservice to us on so many levels. So I think right. that that's really important that we can just be courageous and say, okay, I'm, we're gonna have this conversation. And, and I think as women, you know, we have a, a lot of experience, whether we're mothers or not, a lot of women and women who will be drawn to this conference, you know, have this longing to be of service, to birth a new world. So we are in this really wonderful, powerful position to create these sacred spaces, to bear witness. I mean, bearing witness is huge. Like even if, you know, it doesn't have to be, I mean, I think everybody has a different role to play in this. And some people it will be more maybe specific kind of education about it other people might be creating sacred spaces where we bear witness to people's pain without dismissing it or belittling it or trying to be all spiritual about it right away like oh you know so i think that's really important yes th yeah thank you for that it is it's true and it's, it's learning well what is ours to do what is what is it for me personally i can't solve all the problems it becomes overwhelming thinking about it but what is 
what am I called to do? What is one step I can do? Whether it's uh, giving money to an organization that's doing good work or getting involved with those organizations or um, expanding your world to include more people of color um, in, in your uh, realm. Because you may be, many of us live in a, a white-centered neighborhood or part of a white-centered organization. So how do we, how do we bring about the inclusivity um, to draw more to our lives and, and it, it will enrich us too. It's um, it, so much and, and yeah, it's scary. It, it, and we're afraid to make mistakes. And what I've heard from some people and people of color just saying, hey, it's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, to get over our shame and guilt about that too. Yeah. Um, Cause we're gonna make the bloopers. <laughs> Yeah. So do you have a story, everybody that I know of, a person of color has a story of, of discrimination or an, uh, an experience. And, um, are you willing to share anything with our audience that would, that would help us understand how life is for you? And you come from the Hispanic, the Latino. Um, and so actually in our panel, we have um, many different, uh, it's very diverse. And so we have black women, we have um, Native American, we're going to have a Jewish Caucasian woman mm -hmm. and uh, what else we have um, Asian and, and so there's many, many diverse stories within all that. So it's going to be exciting to have um, to 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 be part of that panel. For sure. I mean, I think for me, it's I mean, it's so interesting because you know, my mom was a lot darker skin than I am and I, my dad was a lot lighter skin, but mm -hmm. I know my mom tells stories of when she would go, and I so believe it, when she would go shopping with me, you know, people assume she was like my baby, like my nanny or something, yeah. you know, like they wouldn't, yeah. which was so, I can't imagine how that was for her, but, you know, I feel like that's been, well, I, one story related to that, that comes to mind. So my husband, who's white, who's Caucasian, and we traveled to North Carolina. My mom went with us. We went, they rented a house. His family rented a house at the beach. And that's not something I'm, I was used to, but we went to the beach. My mom came along and it was a very, very, as a beach in North Carolina, I mean, very white, you know, there was like not, and, and my children were with us and my kids, you know, I have five kids and they're, um, you know, they're different shades of skin tone, but definitely look darker. You know, some of my skin, my kids are, have lighter skin and some of my kids have darker skin. So I definitely felt, had that feeling of, you know, when we would go somewhere like, okay, we really stand out. So my mom, this is interesting. I'm talking about my mom so much, but she was on the porch and the, the neighbors in the other house that had also rented this house by the beach asked her, they said, oh, did they hire you to cook? You know, did they hire you to cook the, like a mech? Like they were, they said it in this tone of like, like not like they were being offensive, but kind of like, oh, how cool that they brought you in to cook an authentic something meal. Cause they could tell, I don't know if they knew Mexican or whatever it was. And what's the most painful for me about that story is that my mom didn't tell me till like months later. And Sorry, I didn't think I was gonna get emotional. I've, I've shared this before, but. I just uh, really, gosh, just imagine how she must have felt. <sighs> yeah. And that she didn't want to say anything, you know, she didn't want to like, probably I'm imagining in her mind, well, she said, you know, she didn't want to mess things up for everybody or kind of, you know, yeah, ruin the vacation, but I was so upset and I so was like, oh gosh, I wish you would have told me I would have, you know, I don't know what I would have done. I mean, but so that's something that comes to mind. That, yeah. Um, was yeah. Well, <clears throat> I appreciate you sharing your, the depth of that feeling. I think we can all feel that. And, you know, it's interesting that the assumptions that people make, especially when it comes to race, that um, we have, um, we have some people of color in our family now. And one of my nieces had married a man from, from Haiti and uh, we have a cabin up at a lake and they were there 
And I think he was down at the beach raking stuff. And a, and a neighbor had said something about our hired help. Oh, <laughs> you know? And so there's just this assumption that people jump to that I hope we're, we're going to that we're going to move away from that. And, and, and I think how, how that comes about is to be curious, like, oh, who is the, who is the man that was, um, I saw on your beach, where it's a curiosity instead of making, jumping to a conclusion that it's somebody you hired. Yeah, um, you know, absolutely. And I think it's what you were saying before. It's like, it really brings to mind to me, like, wow, that we need to be, um, conscious and explicitly trying to be in different spaces right and not just be in you know if somebody's white not just be in white spaces right that's it's a really kind of step outside of that because that's what it to me it was kind of like wow when I could get past my hurt it was like oh my gosh that they must my my guess would be they must not have a lot of people of color in their lives that they interact with on a personal level that isn't just, yeah, like that they don't just kind of have this stereotypical um, image of them if that's where they went and that they just didn't even think, maybe I shouldn't say that out loud. What if it is exactly. even, even right? <laughs> that's kind of rude. My husband has a friend who, um, um, she has two um, black boys and she's white and of the same father and it was a choice and she wasn't married but she's been in a store where no even was a neighbor a neighbor woman said um i think it was sort of like like well, uh, who's the mother no who's the real mother and mm. she was she birthed them oh god you know and it's is like <laughs> you know you think about that is like how insulting to even ask that question is beyond me I know, I know. That's and that's part jumped, of it. We jumped to the conclusion: oh, they must be adopted. You know, well, her sperm donor was a, a I guess I'm, I'm jumping to something here, maybe, but was a black man, and um, that was her. Her it was a a choice. It's just what her life was, and so here she's the real mother, and someone's accusing her of of um, of well, I guess adopting or, or whatever. We just, we just yeah. make these assumptions and without any clue. And, and here's a neighbor and it just, uh, but to even question when she says, I'm the mother, to even then question, no, who's the real mother? Oh, <laughs> this gosh, is like, I know. <laughs> um, so hurtful. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I hope, I mean, my hope is that we just become more conscious of what, it, what we're saying, what we're thinking. Um, and, and to realize, and there's a lot of books out there, I just was this summer, as a lot of us were, of educating ourselves and reading, and one is Me and White Supremacy, and there's, it's like 28 days of questions and writing and, mm -hmm. and looking at all your biases, and have, have you done this? And just thinking those, realizing, oh, yeah, I've thought that before. Even though you don't believe that way, we still have these thoughts that we need to really look at. Where do these come from? Where are these voices coming from? Because they've been yes. maybe ingrained with us, with our culture, with our family, history, all that, and to, to really dive in deep of, of um, what's really real here, you know. Absolutely. I, I think that's so important to really, because I, because you're right, I think sometimes we're scared of exploring because we're scared of the shame that might come up, right? And it's just understanding, like, of course, if we live in a society that has inherent racism, we're not immune to it. I mean, it's, it's right. really so for us to, that's where that those divine feminine qualities, right, of compassion and, you know, are so important so that we can have, compa obviously, compassion for others, but compassion for ourselves as we do our inner journey. And as we, and as even, you know, as a woman of color, for me, it was even like looking, I found it interesting that what was coming up for me a lot was this shame around still feeling hurt by some of these things you know kind of like wanting to be almost like and it's almost like spirituality would get into that because it would be like well in spirituality we're all one mm -hmm. and in reality there's no race so if I'm really spiritually ascended I should not be <laughs> offended by these you know it's like these weird so that was really um, important for me to be with and explore and allow myself to have my experience and yeah as it was coming up 
Yeah, it reminds me of our theme, and I've asked all the presenters too. Um, um, celebrating the spirit of women united, we are one. And it's not to do a spiritual bypass; it's to bring about inclusivity, um, to to recognize the diversity within all of us. And uh, you know, it may sound like a spiritual bypass. Well, when we're united, we all are one. And I've had some Facebook conversations with people who have, who have done that where, oh, there's no systemic racism, we're all one. I don't, you know, and it's kind of like, oh, that's not the reality of what many people live with. Um, and we want that, you know, there's a desire, we are all one, we are reunited and in a spiritual sense we are, but in reality of what people's lives are and what is going on out there, it's, it's, it's not reality for everybody. Yeah, and we can't really get to that unity consciousness until we do this work, right? Like until we right. really, so I do think that that's a vision. I mean, I think that's so important that unity, and I, I get it now that, you know, for some people it might even be like, oh, that's naive. Don't even talk mm -hmm. about, you, you know, but it's like, I still see that as such an important vision. It's a, that's what we're aiming at, but we can't skip this just like in personal healing, right? We can't skip the the steps of looking at the pain and processing it and and yeah we can't skip it we have to go through it you know yeah yeah and it's it's not about we're all the same we're yes. united and being different and honoring, the diversity, honoring each individual um collectively we make up the whole but it's not um whitewashing it, I guess, might be one way to say yeah, it. We're absolutely. all one, we're all the same. No, we're, we are different, but in that oneness. Absolutely. And, and that how beautiful that is, right? That we, I mean, that's why I love talking about our own unique soul's medicine is that we all bring this, this medicine to the world that nobody else can bring. And when a certain, when groups of people are marginalized or not given the same opportunities or not allow, allowed to to be the teachers, leaders, healers, whatever, you know, that they're really meant to be, we're all deprived from that. So it's really so important. Yeah. So thank you so much for being on the, my show today. Thank you so much, Chris, for inviting me. So I just want one last thought. What would you love the listeners to walk away with today? I would love listeners to walk away with just that, that question of the priestess origin story, right? Even if, if as they listen to this, maybe the word priestess hadn't landed in their heart before, but when you know that how I'm defining it, right? Is that call to be a channel of unconditional love for yourself and for others to really, you know, go within and just explore that question like, oh, what, what part of my priestess origin story is my soul guiding me to look at? You know, where am I being guided to? to explore and, and yeah, receive the pearls and the gems from that part of my story.